have you ever run into a piece of technology that just completely reshapes how you think that humans could interact with the world? These are the Neurable MW75s, and they've made me rethink a lot of the frustrations that I had over the years as a mental health doctor, both in and out of military service. Often I would have people come to me with focus issues, but we didn't have any proper measurement tools in the clinic or at home to actually quantify the problem. Then fast track to the present moment, and suddenly we have a piece of technology enter the marketplace that has these soft brainwave sensors on the ear that track your focus through artificial intelligence algorithms. This is the first time that highly accurate focus tracking technology with a ton of scientific backing has been loaded into such a well-designed and premium pair of headphones that come from Master and Dynamic. When I first saw these at CES six months ago, I had a lot of questions that couldn't be answered until now. If I wear them all day, will they still be comfortable given that they have these brain sensors on the muffs? How accurate do you have to be with placement on your head to get a good brainwave signal? Will these features just be too complex for the average user and make them overwhelmed, which will make widespread adoption a lot less likely? What's the sound quality and other features of the headphones themselves? And can we justify the premium price point? Will the fact that these are the first headphones ever that can track your focus be enough to justify something over the Apple AirPods Max or the Beats Studio Pros, for example? I've done a bunch of experimenting with it in different environments like coffee shops, on the plane, and doing different work tasks, I've already had some pretty amazing insights to how my brain works, and I did find one thing that might mess up your focus metrics if you're not careful, so we'll definitely cover that once we go through the related science of how these work and how that relates to if you want to track your focus in different work environments with supplements or anything else that you want to try. These really are beautiful headphones. We've got this anodized aluminum frame. It's got tempered glass housing over the electronics. Very nice, soft lambskin leather on the headband. Unlike some other headphones that have that clickiness when you try to adjust the size, it slides, which gives it that really nice premium feel. On the back of the right side, we have the power button, an LED battery indicator light, and a multi-purpose button. It does have Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity with the range up to 100 feet. And I was happy to see that they have a seamless multi-point connection if you wanna switch between your phone and computer, for example, which is really important for me because oftentimes I don't want it connected to my phone. I want it connected to my computer so I can use it during video editing. It does have a 3.5 millimeter audio cable to use if you want, and it does use a USB-C for charging, which I thought was really smart because even the Apple AirPods Max is moving to USB-C as more of a universal port that people are gravitating towards more and more these days. They do have these grills that take the sound into four beaming microphones to filter out that environmental noise for the active noise cancellation capabilities. It has two modes of ambient listening that we do see in other models like the Apple AirPods Max, which has transient mode that allows you to hear more of what's going on around you for outdoor awareness if you need to in certain situations. It does have four additional microphones for talk quality during phone calls. When I used the headphones on the plane, I found out that the active noise cancellation was really great. I did compare the noise cancellation to the Apple AirPods Max, which are pretty renowned for their active noise canceling capabilities. So we'll definitely cover what I found there a little bit later in this video. First, I wanna talk more about these brainwave sensors. These ear pads on the MW75s are actually replaceable. They click on and off with magnets. I don't expect these sensors to wear down anytime soon, but if they did get damaged or worn down, you could just order new muffs to attach to your headphones, or if you wanted to replace them after a year or so for hygienic purposes, you do have that option. You can see here this stripe pattern. Those are the EEG sensors, and there's actually six channels on each muff. Now, these are dry fabric EEG sensors, which are a significant engineering feat in themselves. We have seen some other brainwave analysis products like the Muse headband, and incorporate in soft EEG sensors. That technology has been around for a few years now. It has a lot of scientific backing, so we know this technology works. But unlike the Muse headband, we now have them in a pair of headphones, so you don't feel weird when you're using brainwave tracking technology in public. For example, last week I did a little social experiment. I put on the Muse headband in a Starbucks and felt 
totally weird <laughs> wearing it in the middle of a coffee shop. But then I throw on the MW75 Neuros and no one can even tell that I'm using brainwave technology as I sip on my Starbucks coffee. In fact, I'm biased, but I think that these in some ways look even cooler than the Apple AirPods Max. And I definitely feel really cool because I know in that moment that I'm discreetly using cutting edge brain computer interface technology while just sitting there in a coffee shop. I won't dive too much into the scientific details of these headphones. There's a lot of published papers that I'll link below, but they do use electroencephalography or EEG for short. Basically, the soft sensors are detecting tiny micro voltage changes on your skin that are ultimately coming from your brain tissue. Traditionally, we've taken these complex EEG readings and used mathematics to break them down into different frequency bands that might look familiar to you. There's delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. Nurbel's research over many years has narrowed the relevant markers down to changes in alpha and low beta that tend to drop when focus is lost during a distraction or during task switching. From my understanding, this is the region of signal where they have trained their machine learning algorithms to watch to understand if you're focused or not in the moment. Now we know that machine learning algorithms can take a bunch of variables in, so that's probably a bit of a simplification, but that's the gist of it for now. Now Neurable did years of research and have published in peer reviewed journals. I'll link those papers below that validate the sensors for their brain signal accuracy. But the true beauty of all this is that you don't even have to worry about all that because the machine learning algorithms are doing their thing, analyzing the brainwave signals and then presenting the information to you in really easy to read graphs that show Show high, medium, and low focus reports. And Neurable will be releasing real-time focus games that you can use for demonstrations or just testing the technology on the app while using the headphones as well. So I was really happy with the focus tracking technology capabilities, but all of this only will work well if you actually want to wear the headphones, right? And I think that has to do with both the sound quality and are the headphones comfortable because that will determine if you want to wear them all day. These are over ear pads, meaning that they don't go directly on your ear, which helps with them being more comfortable, especially when you wear them for long periods of time. Any little pressure on your ear itself can become uncomfortable over time. And the ear cups themselves are angled, which is a popular thing for headphones to do these days. It creates more space between your ear and the pad to give more of an airier sound with a cleaner bass and a better presence with mid-range sound frequencies. In the industry, it's called warmer lows and richer highs. They do use 40 millimeter beryllium coated drivers, which is really high quality. I tested both the MW75 Neuros and Apple AirPods Max and actually found the Neuros to have better bass than the Max. One of the really important things about headphone comfort that I learned is the weight, which is why a lot of designers tend to go with plastic as a form factor. So I was a little worried with the premium materials that they use for MW75s with the tempered glass and the anodized aluminum. But at 338 grams, they do come in lighter than the Apple AirPods Max, which weigh about 386 grams. That's a 48 gram difference. One of the criticisms of Apple AirPod Max is the weight, and they tried to get around that by by distributing the weight with this mesh that goes on top of your head. I don't think the MW75 Neuros had to go that far because honestly, I didn't have any problem wearing these headphones for the most of the day. I couldn't even tell that those soft EEG sensors were on the muffs. I wore both the Apple AirPods Max and the MW75s for about five hours straight. And I was really impressed by how easy it was to put on the headphones as far as the connection between the sensors and your skin. Brainwave technology is really sensitive, so it's really easy to contaminate the signal if you don't have the sensors on your skin the right way. But this is the easiest EEG technology that I've ever experienced. The form factor of the headphones just comfortably presses the sensors to your skin. And most of the time, the headphones don't even ask me to reposition to get a better signal. I just throw them on and I'm like, really? You're ready to go already? Don't we need to check the sensor quality? But I mean, I guess it's getting good signal because it's off to the races as soon as you put them on. Normally with other devices like Emotive, I'm wetting the sensors with saline or at least wiping the Muse headband down to get a better signal. But with these Neurable headphones, it's just so easy to put them on and get to testing things. 
I will say when my wife tried the headphones, it was a little bit more challenging to get the connection. The upper electrodes wanted a repositioning when she put them on. And so her long hair was getting in the way of the sensors on the top of her ear. And she did have to put her hair up into a ponytail to use them. But when she put her hair up in a bun, it really was just as simple as putting them on and using them. One of the other important things to consider is battery life. When you're just using the headphones, they say that it can last up to 32 hours. But unfortunately, the EEG brainwave sensors use up a lot of juice. So if you use them along with the active noise cancellation, you're only going to get about eight hours of battery life if you're using both the noise cancellation and the focus tracking at the same time, which for me, I want both of them on pretty much all the time when I'm using them. So I did have to charge overnight from day to day, but I really didn't have them just die in the middle of the day on me. At least eight hours is long enough for a work day. So if you want to bring them to work and just plug them in and track your focus throughout the day, there shouldn't be any issue there. Let's go ahead and set up the app. We have all the features here. You can set up your own account, which will be important for tracking your own individual metrics over time. There is a guest mode so that you can show other people this technology, but their data won't mess up your focus trends in your account. We see the battery life in the upper left-hand corner. And before you start a focus session, you can check the quality of the EEG sensor connection. Now you can see if I move the muff off my ear a little bit, it loses the connection. And if I put it back on, you'll see those bars fill in again, meaning that we have a good EEG connection. You can look at focus trends on individual days and over the course of a week. And it gives you focus points as you go along, which I have to say that I didn't think it would motivate me, but as I used it more and more, I'm like, okay, I wanna get more focus points. It's like wearing the Apple Watch and wanting to close those those exercise rings. They do give you some focusing tips on the homepage, like limiting social media. I do expect the coaching on the app to get much more sophisticated as they update the software and the firmware and add more features to what they are calling the Neurable AI Focus Coach. I found it really helpful that you can label the type of work that you are doing. Before you start a focus session, you can tell the app, well, I'm doing something creative or I'm doing work. Or for me, I would pick other when I would meditate so that I could categorize, okay, meditation is going to be a much more different type of focus work than doing video editing. So being able to label everything kept things organized and helped me learn a lot more about what my focus patterns are between different activities. One of the first insights that I got is that I have my best focus during a creative session. That might mean script writing or video editing for me. Over the years, I've realized that I am a really creative guy, which is probably why I've gravitated more towards making videos, talking about technology, rather than filling my schedule with clinical medicine every day, which is much more algorithmic. So during my creative flow state, I'm doing my favorite thing, which is talking about neurotech technology and it showed on these focus tracking headphones. It said my best attention span was 44 minutes long during the creative session. Basically, if you don't have a low focus bar that is indicated by the orange color, you have a sustained attention span. If you lose enough focus, you get these orange bars that tend to show up when you are distracted or you are switching tasks and it takes a little while for your mind to get engaged in the new task. I also noticed it during meditation sessions. Sometimes I have good focus at the beginning of the meditation session, but then my mind will wander. In this session specifically, my mind was wandering about ideas to make <laughs> for these neurable videos. So you can see how my attention was lost on the meditation object, which was my breath, into going into daydreaming about making videos. And then on this one, on the 6th of September, you can see where I did a task switch between checking on some financial accounts I was doing. I was actually in flow state during that time, but then I switched into video editing and it took a little while for my brain to get back online. So my flow was disrupted there. And the big tip that I alluded to at the beginning of this video to avoid messing up your focus data was an insight that I had on the flight going from the YouTube conference in Dallas back home to Las Vegas. What happened is that I had the headphones on when I was reading a book and then I decided to take a little break. So I closed my eyes and listened to music for about five minutes during the course of a focus session. What I noticed is that the focus went way up when I closed my eyes according to this graph. And if you think about how their metrics are based on increases or decreases of alpha, it's a well-known fact that when you close your eyes, alpha goes way up. So the difference between having my eyes open and my eyes closed caused the algorithm to think that I was engaged in deep focus when I had my eyes closed when I was just taking a break. So my advice is that when you're doing focus tracking, be consistent within sessions on whether your eyes are open or your eyes are closed because the differences between the two is going to throw off your focus metrics. So make sure you hit that take a break option if you are focusing with your eyes open and wanna close your eyes for a little break. 
So I can tell you that I've tried some other focus tracking headphones and technology that are starting to hit the market like Emotive NM8 and the Enophones. And the sound quality of the MW75 is just blows both of them away. It's not even a competition. The Neurable headphones are much more in the class of the Apple AirPods Max. I do have a hard time distinguishing between the quality of both. I'm not an audiophile, but I would say that Neurable way outclasses Emotive MN8 and the Eno phones. And it's more difficult to distinguish between Apple AirPods Max and the Neurable MW75s. I would say that the Apple AirPods Max have a better active noise cancellation, but I did feel like the bass was better for the Neurable headphones. So in my opinion, between the Apple AirPods Max and the MW75 Neuros, you have almost the same quality of headphones. But with the MW75s, you have focus tracking. And that brings us to the cost. There are a lot of studio grade headphones that go somewhere between three and $4,000. Most consumer level luxury listening headphones are between $380 and $550 for the Apple AirPods Max. Now these Neurable MW75s are coming in at $699 right now. So they are among the most expensive headphones out there that are not studio grade headphones. So if you're just looking to listen to music, they might not make much sense, but the MW75 Neuros really are creating a whole new category of headphones. So if you're looking to actually improve your focus and productivity, maybe test some different supplements or medications and see if they help with your focus, these MW75s are totally in a class of their own. It's just so new. Marcus Brownlee was just openly criticizing the Apple AirPods Max team this year because the second version doesn't have really anything new except upgraded noise cancellation and a USB-C port instead of the lightning port. So Marquez was complaining about them and I'm like, Marquez, if you really actually want to see what innovation in the headphones market looks like, take a look at the Neurable NW75s because I think you'd be fascinated by this tech. So at the end of the day, we're asking the question, is the focus tracking technology worth an extra $150 over the Apple AirPods Max? For me, it's a resounding yes. I'm totally biased, but neurotechnology I think is so cool. And I think that the insights that these have already given me have already made back the amount of money I would have spent on these. The headphones are really cool. I feel really cool for using them. And I think that it ties into this whole idea of self-improvement and being the best version of yourself. And I've wanted a sleek, cool piece of neurotech that's really undetectable and doesn't make me feel weird when I wear it in public for a long time. Now, the big question is, does the average consumer find that the value of focus tracking makes up for the price? I think for people that struggle with focus or productivity issues, there's going to be a pain point there that will encourage getting a device like this. But also for early adopters that just want the status of working with neurotech, they do say that they're going to come out with a software development kit at some point in the near future. And I do find the whole industry moving in that direction where you have wearable devices, just like Garmin and Apple Watch have done with HRV over the last couple of years. So if you wanna look cool and say that you're using neurotechnology powered through artificial intelligence, get the MW75 Neuros. I've been really proud to share these headphones with my family, just to show them where the industry is going and feel like so excited about brain computer interface and neurotechnology. And I love just using the headphones. They're such high quality. And I don't think that this technology is too complex for people to use in the mainstream either. You just put them on and it's really easy to get a good connection on the brainwave sensors. And the app is very easy to read. It just gives you these bars in the graph and gives you trends over days and weeks. For those of you that are concerned about your own personal brainwave data, Neurable has stated again and again that your data is encrypted, it's de-identified and, and stored in a secure data storage location. They really wanna go above and beyond with the data compliance Compliance. Hope you enjoyed the review. There is an affiliate link for the MW75 Neuros in the description of this video. If you want to help support this channel, it really helps a lot if you click that link. It'll take you to the website to make a purchase if you want. So if you want to learn more about the experiments and different scenarios that I use these headphones in and see the data from that, I do a deep dive of the focus tracking technology in this video and reveal what it's like to wear it for a couple of weeks doing different focus experiments. I skipped caffeine for a day. I did supplements like Alpha Brain, and I did a real deep dive on what this technology means for society moving forward, and I'll see you on the other side.